Now, for the first time, SpaceX has carried out an on-the-ground test of its huge, super-heavy boosters. It brings the company's Starship rocket system one step closer to the Moon and Mars. Elon Musk's SpaceX has carried out a successful test flight of the world's largest and most powerful rocket, with its giant Starship splashing down in the Indian Ocean. This is the SpaceX Starship, and it's a beast. Massive, powerful, and unlike anything we've ever built before. It's not just a rocket. It's the first real shot humanity has at sending people from Earth all the way to Mars. But let's be clear, as cool as it looks, this isn't going to be some luxury cruise through space. The ride, it'll be long, risky, uncomfortable, and yeah, kind of gross. The people who make this trip are going to be pushed to their absolute limits. So if Starship is really going to carry humans to Mars, what does that actually look like? Originally, the plan for Starship was wild. The upper half of this 50 meter tall rocket was supposed to be wide open, a massive 1000 cubic meter space for crew and cargo with huge panoramic windows and an open concept layout. Basically, a space loft with a view of the stars. Welcome back to the channel. Glad you're here. Hit that like button and subscribe if you're into this kind of future forward space stuff. We've got more coming. Now, when SpaceX first started testing early Starship prototypes, let's just say it was rough. Explosions, crashes, lots of trial and error. One of the biggest design changes during that messy phase moving the secondary fuel tanks, the ones used for landing burns, from the bottom of the rocket up into the nose cone. Why? Stability. You don't want all your fuel sloshing around at the bottom during a delicate landing. The change made landings way more reliable. But it came at a cost. That iconic pointy top of the rocket, yeah, it's now packed with fuel tanks. So much for those big cinematic windows for the crew. Later, when SpaceX started flying Starship into space and back, they realized something else. It needed to be bigger. So in 2025, we got the Starship Phi-2. Here's the twist. While it's about two meters taller on the outside, the inside actually shrank. Why? They extended the fuel tanks further up into the payload section. That gives the rocket more propellant enough to carry itself and a 100 metric ton payload all the way to Earth orbit. So, what does that mean for us? Well, if you're hitching a ride to Mars on the current version of Starship, you're looking at around 500 cubic meters of livable space. That's half of what was originally promised, but still pretty roomy compared to what astronauts are used to. For context, the International Space Station has around 900 cubic meters but that's spread across tight corridors and tiny compartments. And it supports a full-time crew of seven and up to 13 at one point. So how many people could you really send to Mars in a Starship 5-2? Funny enough, NASA already crunched the numbers. Back in 2013, they studied this exact scenario. For a round trip Mars mission, roughly 2.5 years, they estimated that each crew member would need at least 25 cubic meters of shared space. And that's not personal space. It's the collective area needed per person to eat, sleep, work, and not totally lose their minds. So based on that NASA research, Starship Vi-2 could safely carry up to 20 people without anyone going stir crazy. Sounds pretty good, right? But hold up, there's a catch. See. Crew space isn't the same thing as cargo space. A people-carrying starship needs more than just an empty shell. We're talking floors, walls, and a central column with a ladder or lift to move between levels. And the entire bottom deck? That's got to be reserved for an airlock and cargo bay. Because, fingers crossed, we're landing on Mars and stepping out onto the surface someday. So, when you factor all that in, that generous sounding 500 cubic meters of space, it shrinks fast. And suddenly, things start feeling real cramped. Sure, 
you might be able to make it work for a crew of six. But six people isn't how we're going to build a new society on Mars. And that's where Starship 5-3 comes into the picture. The so-called Long Starship. It stretches the rocket out to a towering 69 meters, about 17 meters longer than V2. More space, right? Kind of. Here's the deal. The extra length adds a lot of weight. That means larger fuel tanks, which eat into some of the new space. So, while we don't get the entire 17 meters back for living quarters, we do get something that's finally close to what SpaceX originally imagined. 